I became uh, involved with with hemp because you know I, I come from a rural community and I, I live on a farm and I, I want to raise my children on the farm but I also you know want my children to have a, a quality of life that's really hard to to achieve on a on a farm in the type of community that I live in right. so, so I think we have these two great opportunities you know we have hemp which again you know, instituted in a, you know, in an equitable, in this area, like in an equitable Burley tobacco cooperative with a couple other co crops could really turn these local economies around and get these farms producing. I mean, w we have to protect this land, right? I mean, the people around me, if they don't have any value in their land, and I mean, I get offers to cut my land all the time. And I can tell you it's pretty attractive, you know, if I didn't care about a, a tree. So you have to find ways to make land economically productive, and I think the way you do that is using this plant and diversified farms. The, the fact that everything is connected, right, it's this agrarian principle that we're all connected. So you can't really have a, a movement for hemp, right, because that's not really a movement, right? Why do we want hemp? Well, I don't, I'm not involved with hemp because I want hemp. I just said I'm involved with hemp because I want my kids to go to a quality school and I want to have quality services in my community. You know, I want to regenerate the land and capture carbon, right? I mean, those are my, that's what my movement, right? But those aren't singular. Those are all interconnected. And the hemp plant, to, to assume that this plant is a singular movement is to really limit it. So if you have small diversified farms, I mean, not only are they protecting your natural resources, right? Because at the end of the day, we, can, you know, from I guess I should say from my perspective, our our biggest value is our natural resource base, right? And and so small farms protect your natural resource base. They they diversify your local food system. You know, I mean, there's only you know so many varieties of corn. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know the numbers, but 70 or 80 percent of the corn can't be more than three or four varieties that are grown in this country. You know, so we're a pest away from a food crisis, you know, and I mean, having diversified farms that can fill in those gaps, protect the land and create jobs. I mean, that's that, that that's what's important. But I mean, that's why I feel like this, you know, the opportunity that the HIA in, is in right now is is at a critical point, right? Because we need somebody to really step up and help make, you know, true, honest connections and start painting a realistic picture of what this industry is, is gonna look like. Um, you know, it's, it's got this history, right? I mean, it's 20 plus years and, and, you know, within this history, there are so many smart and educated people you know, that know so much. I mean, I, I, I mean, I've only been involved in this crop since 2013, right? I mean, there's people that have been doing this since the, the early 90s and before. And so, I mean, to, to look back and think that the, the Hemp Industries Association has this legacy and this support network, that resource base that we have is a tremendous asset to our members. And that's how we're gonna, gonna drive information and resources to our members. Um, you know, we have a responsibility because we have that history. I mean, we were the organization that got us to this point, you know, and now it's time to take that step forward and start using the network and the resources and the experts that we have within our membership to bring everybody together to figure out the best path forward for this, this plant.